So we have six different ways to hack your ex's mind to figure out what exactly is on your ex's mind during no contact. And right now, after the breakup, you're feeling confused, desperate, and totally frustrated. And how do we know that? We made every single mistake that you've been making. And then once we quit making those mistakes and did exactly what we're about to tell you to do, not only did we know what our ex was thinking, but our ex started to pursue us. So in order to hack your ex's mind, you need to be on your ex's mind. And in order to do that, you have to go no contact. And that means cutting off all communication, no calls, no texts, no social media. And I know this is the hardest thing you'll ever have to do, and I know you love them. It's like you miss your ex, you miss, you miss your best friend. You used to talk to them every single day, day in and day out. And now we're telling you not to talk to your ex. I mean, but think about it. How can you stay on your ex's mind when you're always in their face? So when you go no contact, the first thing that's gonna be on your ex's mind is relief. They're going to be relieved that the relationship is over and that the breakup is taking place. And I know that's a hard pill to swallow, but at this stage, your ex is feeling relief that things are going according to their plan and you're out of their life. But, but that relief slowly fades into curiosity because going no contact and giving your ex that absence piques their curiosity. Because what no contact does is it's a pattern interrupt. It breaks the pattern of your detrimental behavior. You have a one track mind. Your mind is focused on getting your ex back at all costs and doing whatever it takes. And unfortunately, everyone handles the breakup the same and there's no rule book. There's no rule book for this. There's no manual on how to get your ex back. Because the last thing that people will do is walk away from somebody they love because they know where you stand and they'll do anything to get you back. They lose interest and they take you for granted. Because you need to value yourself. So you should never stay somewhere you're not wanted. Because of your absence, because you're giving your ex the breakup and you're going no contact, your ex is going to take notice because silence speaks so much louder than words could ever say. And because of the silence, the questions that they ask themselves change. Before you went no contact, the questions were, why won't they leave me alone? Why are they over texting me? Why won't they stop texting me? Why won't they get the hint? I told them I was done. Why can't they just move on? And after no contact, the questions change to, well, what happened to them? Why aren't they texting me? Where are they? Why aren't they calling me? Like, do they even miss me? Because I, you know, I miss them. But listen, all the begging, the pleading, the crying, Nobody misses that kind of stuff. It's not a turn on for anyone. They don't miss what you don't appreciate. Nobody's emotions will just change and all of a sudden get reattracted to you just by seeing you crying and your puffy eyes and the, the begging and the pleading that you're doing and blowing up their phone and all that. It's a, it's a turn off. And it'll get to the point where it kind of creeps them out and scares you because it kind of makes you think like, I didn't know this they were this kind of person. I don't know what they're really capable of doing. They're completely different now. They change. They're getting worse and worse and worse throughout the relationship. They, they start off as a great person and towards the end, they got a little more crazy or a little more desperate. Now they're, they're just, you know, embarrassing to even be around. You know, it doesn't turn anybody on by doing stuff like that. And when you go no contact, that's when the nostalgia kicks in. That's when they start smelling your fragrance on the pillow and start thinking about you and missing you. And they see the picture of you together on vacation out in Cancun. And, you know, they start thinking about all the fun times you have together and missing that meal that you always cook for them in the morning time. And, you know, and, and that's what starts to drive them crazy and really start to think about you and miss you more. And that's when that nostalgia keeps them up all night. And then that's what makes them rethink their decision. All of the detrimental behavior that you were doing after the breakup, it just further validated their decision to leave you. It just reaffirmed that they made the right decision. But you pulling back and going dark and going no contact, cutting off all the communication, now it allows the space to be created for them to think about their decision in a, in a much clearer light, in a much clearer head. Breakups are a very emotionally heightened situation. You guys are running on 10. There's a lot of words being thrown around. It's, a, it's very messy and it's, it's very deeply emotional. And a lot of people don't make great decisions when they're under duress emotionally. So going no contact allows your ex to experience the breakup because yes, they decided to leave you, but they have to experience the breakup as well. When, and when they go through the certain stages and we had just had a client that was talking about this as well. He didn't think that she could be the one to have a change of heart about making a major decision like this. And it's possible, but you have to go no contact in order to do that. You have to give them space to do that. And when they start to ask different questions about the breakup, maybe they were too hasty. And the thing is no contact allows your ex to get in their head and think about the decision. And when those thoughts are circulating through their head, they say to themselves, 
did I make a mistake by breaking up? Maybe I was a little bit too hasty. Maybe I was a little bit too harsh. They really are a good person. Maybe I was a little bit too harsh on them and a little bit too negative. I was going through a lot. I was going through a tough situation at work and maybe I was just too stressful and maybe I was a little bit too hasty to break up with them. Maybe my family was wrong about them. I'm Vera doesn't know anything about relationships. She's never had a good relationship in her life. Why did I listen to her? And then something interesting happens. Your ex says, oh my God. I made a mistake. And then they're like, oh my God, what if they what if they moved on? Fear is the greatest motivator. It's infectious and dominating. What if I what if I push them away for good? You know, what if I, you know, what if what if they're no longer in my life anymore and I can't get them back? You know, I I miss all the good times we had together. Then they have that fear of you never coming back in their lives and they're they're questioning themselves. They're wondering, did I make a mistake? Did I make the right decision? Did we break up over something small and petty or, you know, should we have tried harder to make it work? You know, maybe I wasn't the 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 greatest person in the world to my ex. You know, maybe I, I, I could have done things differently or maybe we should have gone see the, a, a therapist or, or some type of relationship coach or figured out our situation in a different way and opposed to, you know, me overreacting and breaking up with them over something petty. And one of the most terrifying questions your ex asked themselves is, what if they're better off without me? Going no contact brings about a lot of insecurities in your ex because it allows them the space to look inward, to really question themselves, what they brought to the relationship and their mistakes. And the thing is, no one wants to miss out on a good thing. No one wants to, we were just talking about this with a client. No one wants to eat in an empty restaurant. No one wants to miss out a good thing, especially when they've experienced something and then now that thing is gone and that thing is better without them. It's new and improved. It's like, this is why companies like Apple can prey on, we were just talking about this, companies like Apple can come out with the same product over and over and over again, it's an, and it's a new addition, but it's really the same phone because no one wants to be left behind. Everyone wants to be with the new shiny toy and you improving yourself after the breakup, you 2.0, you doing all of the things that we talk about, meditating, going to the gym, traveling, upgrading your wardrobe, all of the things that you can do to improve yourself and not just physically, but emotionally and mentally, your ex is going to see that, whether maybe you have kids together or you're doing a drop off of the kids and they see that you have a, you have a new hairstyle or you know, you're wearing a new fragrance and, or you lost 15 pounds and you're wearing nice shoes now, whereas before you just wore sneakers and sweatpants and leggings, you've upgraded your style, they're gonna take notice of that. Or you're posting your upgrade on social media now. The thing is, no one wants to be left out, especially when they had you before. So what you're doing is you're, you're showing your ex that you're moving on without them and that you're way better off without them, like you don't need them in your life. And that alone is a huge blow to your ex's ego. It shows them that not only not only do you not need your ex, but they're the ones holding you back because now you're doing better in life. Things are looking up for you. You're, you're doing way better than you were during the whole three years that you and the ex were together. When you're doing better after your breakup, your ex is gonna ask themselves a lot of questions. And one of the questions they're gonna ask is, was I the catalyst to become, to make them better? What was I doing to hold them back? To be able to make the statement that this person did better without me, maybe I was the one that was holding them back. That speaks value. Nobody wants to end a relationship and then see their ex doing way better than what they're doing. I mean, I know you hear it all the time, hey, I wish you the best, you deserve the best. But the moment you start doing yeah. better, that's when they start freaking out and that's when they really start questioning themselves and start getting jealous and missing you and really wanting you back. So that's why we, we put so much emphasis on self-improvement and improving yourself. We actually had a coaching session with a client and she told us that they ran into their ex and the, the situation really didn't go that well. And it had nothing to do on her part. It was more so her ex. And she got the vibe that he felt like, how dare you become better without me? And that's a very interesting concept that people can have after the breakup, but it's real. You know, having your ex thinking, how dare they move on? You know, you, you gotta create these emotional spikes with them, you know? Even though even though they, they may come off mad and angry, that's not necessarily a bad thing. You almost want them to have these emotional spikes because now the anger is more of a, you know, it's almost like they're angry at themselves for what they did to you, for breaking up with you and leaving you. And then having that doubt and questioning, can I can I get them back? They're confused and, and maybe they have a new person in their life and they they know this new person does not compare to you. So that's part of the reason why after a breakup, your ex tends to get like a little bit angry and uh, you know, they get a little little rude and nasty towards you. It's, it's almost like a self-inflicted breakup, a self-inflicted pain from the breakup. 
These are emotions that you want to have. You want to spike their emotions because an emotional spike creates tension. And the thing is, if you want to create tension with your ex and create an emotional spike with your ex to get them chasing you, just knowing how to hack their mind is not enough. There's just one more thing that you need to focus on. And we found that without this one thing, your ex will not be reaching out to you during no contact. And that's why you cannot ignore clicking on this video to the left because it's gonna take what you learned in this video and level it up 10 times, if not 100 times more. So go ahead and click that link to the left and then we'll see you guys on the flip side. Peace.